Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is by the incredible mind of Born Beach over on Reddit No Sleep. As ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled My grandmother died and passed down her cabin to my brother and me. We just discovered a secret she had hidden from us for two decades. Part 4. Let's get straight into that. Eric and I ran so hard that my lungs felt like they caught fire. Exhausted, I fell to the dirt with a groan. The pain of my smashed face, broken wrist and a lifetime of poor decisions had finally caught up with me. I'm... I'm done, I breathed. Eric doubled back, crouching next to me. Take it easy, man. Look, he pointed ahead. We're nearly to the river. Let's get you some water. And so we were. Now that I was catching my breath, the rest of my senses seemed to sharpen again. I could hear the rushing currents just barely through the howling wind. I pushed myself to my feet and the two of us made our way to the bank, where I dropped to my knees and slurped as much water as my mouth could hold. Pass me the book, Eric said. I reached inside my jacket and handed it to him, its pages rolling in the storm. He held it closed and up to the light of the moon. The entire time you had this, he said, squinting at the cover. And you never noticed the author? I looked at him, wiping dribbles of water from my mouth. I mean, it's not like I've had it my whole life. I left it here when we went home. I really didn't need any mementos of that week. Who wrote it? Grandma, he said incredulously. He turned a book towards me and jabbed a finger at the bottom text. Gail G. Fazdro. Well, I'll be damned. I don't sweat it, Eric said, shaking his head. I missed it on first glance too. He glanced around, no doubt scouting for a place free from the wind with enough moonlight to read by. Eventually, he settled on a large boulder near the water, shielded from the storm by a gnarled fir tree. He clambered up with some effort. Did you know she was a writer? He called down to me. Not at all, I said. Uh, come to think of it, I had no idea about anything Grandma did, besides come over every Christmas and bake apple tarts. Mum never talked about it. Eric flipped the book open to the first page and adjusted his glasses. Mind keeping a lookout while I pursue this thing? I nodded, rising from the riverbed and looking up and down the shore. No sign of the man and no sign of the beast that destroyed the cabin, either. So far, so good. I cradled my broken wrist and breathed a sigh of relief, pushing it out of my blood cake nostrils in a painful snort. I hiked up the side of the bank, getting to a higher ground so I could get a better watch over the area. As I did, the book played in my mind. The Mysteries of the Cryptids. Why would Grandma write something like that anyway? For kicks? She never so much as mentioned the Loch Ness Monster or the Abominable Snowman growing up, and here she was a supposed authority on them. It seemed bizarre to me, but then all of this did. Had she known about the man too? And what about the beast? Well, she must have. Something then splashed into the river, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. I swallowed my eyes searching up and down the running current, scanning every outcropped rock and wayward branch. Just a fish, hopefully. Seconds turned to minutes, the only sound coming from the croak of the river toads and Eric flipping through the pages of mysteries. Maybe I was making a bigger deal out of things than I needed to. I closed my eyes and tried the breathing exercises my therapist had recommended. Then another splash 
this one closer, louder. I strained my vision, even beneath the glow of the full moon. The river's dancing waves were difficult to keep track of. Light gleamed off of them one moment and then died the next. Small flickers caught my eye, but when I look, I'd see only dark water staring back at me. There was something swimming towards us. Eric flipped another page of the book, nonchalantly, his expression thoughtful. Eyebrows furrowed in focus. He hadn't noticed a thing. Something felt wrong, though. It was the same feeling I'd had when I first came upon the man by the river, like my mind was picking up on things that I hadn't yet fully processed. Eric, I called, taking a couple of steps onto the stone shore. Come away from the water. He looked up, perplexed. Why? He adjusted his glasses and looked around, holding his hair against the wind. Is something here? I need the light of the clearing to read, Matt. Just, just get off the fucking rock, man. Come over to me. I glanced upward. The moon shone, pale and ominous through the drifting clouds. Ah, there's plenty of light over here. I'm nearly finished. Just relax. Now, man, I shouted. Groaning, he creased his page and closed the book, and then slid down the big rock, carefully. He steadied himself on the wet, clacking stones as he walked towards me. Fuck's sake, Matt. Another splash. The day we met the man by the river, I said, the pain in my wrist fading against the backdrop of my mountain fear. I came back down to the water. What? Eric said, bracing himself against the roaring wind. Oh, I forgot the book. Jake brought us down fishing rods. You remember? I was so excited that I had forgotten all about the mysteries. I left it on the riverbed. I was transfixed by the river now. Something was in there. I knew it. When I came back down to get it, I saw something in the waves. Like a fish, Eric said, finally reaching me. He turned, following my gaze to the river, though he looked sceptical. I shook my head. Bigger, I think. I don't know. I just grabbed the book and I ran. Another splash. This one was near the shore. I backed up, nearly slipping on the stones. Behind us, the pitch black of the woods, and in front of us, whatever lurked in the water. You hear that? I said. And Eric nodded, stashing a book into his pocket. After what happened earlier, I say we don't take any chances. Let's find somewhere safer to read. Where, though? The woods? We get lost, and... There was no question of that. Back to the cabin or whatever was left of it. No point. The car was totaled. And besides, whatever beast had come knocking didn't really sound nearly as reasonable as the man. I was probably still around. No. We were resigned to the river. We just need to be careful and stay as far from the shore as we could. Good Lord! Said a voice nearby. I jumped and my arm flying in front of Eric instinctively. You boys really have worked yourselves up, haven't you? I wheeled around to see a familiar face standing at the height of the river bank, a stone in his hand. He held it and it landed in the water with a heavy splash. Uncle Jake? I shouted. He began walking down the bank, slowly and with a sway in his step, like he'd been drinking. Good news, boys. He shot us a smile, but it felt wrong. Horrible. His eyes were unfocused and his tongue lolled from his mouth. I just found Griffin. He can't wait to see you. My grandmother died and passed down her cabin to my brother and me. Our uncle doesn't seem like himself anymore. Part 5. Let's get straight into that. Uncle Jake ambled towards us, his pace irregular. One moment he moved slowly, the next frantically. His head seemed loose on his neck, rolling about with his momentum. I... I was worried about you two, he said. Matt, Eric muttered. I held up my hand, indicating for him to be quiet. I was uncomfortable about all of this too, 
and Jake didn't seem like himself. After everything else that had happened tonight, I wasn't taking any chances with anybody, family or otherwise. But still, I needed to know what the situation was. I needed to hear him speak. My eyes darted around, taking stock of our surroundings. If it came to a fight, I wanted to be ready. I cursed myself for letting the man take the fire iron. Still, it was always the river, and in a two against one, Eric and I had a chance against our uncle, even with my busted wrist. I swiveled my gaze back to Jake. He was only a couple of car lengths away from us now, and I could see him more clearly. His eyes were pale, milky, and faded, like he was drugged. His mess of dark hair shot out from all angles beneath his trucker hat. I had never seen him in such a sorry state. Boys, he said, burping. I just need to talk to you two for a second. About Griff. Ah, he's just up ahead, but he's scared of the water. He gestured towards the wood, swaying on the spot. Come and see him. I didn't say anything. I knew Griff was dead. I pulled his scorched skull out of the fireplace myself, and Eric had been there with me. Jake took a couple of frantic steps forward. I recoiled, putting myself in front of Eric. Call it older brother instincts, or call it stupidity. All I knew was this cabin wasn't going to claim any more of my family. Oh, Jake said, stopping and tilting his head. Are you afraid? Another burp. Of me. What's going on here? I said quietly. I'm talking to my nephews. He chuckled, feet dancing to keep his balance. Come on, Matthew, Eric, le let's go. Another step forward. Don't take another fucking step, I shouted. Stay the hell back. And he paused, his demeanor changing. His face drooped, his sing-song smile replaced by a snarl showing a row of yellowed teeth. You boys were supposed to join us a long time ago, you know? But she got soft. What? No, she didn't, Eric said, stepping out from behind me. He held the book in his hands, holding it up to Jake. She realized how sick this whole thing was. She spared us. I had no idea what either of them were talking about, but Eric had clearly read something in Mysteries while up on that rock. And whatever he had read, Jake, uh, he knew about it too. Spared you, Jake spat. He took off his cap and chucked it to the side, with the corner of his mouth twitching. At the cost of the rest of us, maybe. And he took a shambling step forward, his eyes cold with menace. What makes you better than me? I knelt down using Eric's tool frame as cover from Jake's vision. My good hand found a decent sized rock and I clutched it, rising back to my feet and placing it in my jacket pocket discreetly. We're not better than you, Eric said, but that doesn't mean we deserve to become monsters, either. Deserve to become monsters? What the hell had Eric read? You think I'm a fucking monster, Jake bellowed, his eyes bulging. He slammed his finger to his chest. I'm a product of progress, just like you should have been. My heart thundered. I didn't know this man anymore. Have you been drinking, Jake? I hope the answer was yes. I needed something to make sense tonight. Drinking? Jake said, his wild, cataract eyes looking from me to my brother. You ain't told him yet, have you, Eric? Didn't invite him to your book club? And Eric swallowed. He's talking about mysteries. Oh, no shit, I said, getting impatient. What about it? Help me the fuck out here, man. I'm... I'm sorry. He said, shaking his head. More anxiety? And when it came down on Eric, it came down thick. The book's read it like a autobiography, Matt. I thought it was a stupid pulp novel Grandma wrote, but oh, it's like research notes, man. Research notes? Jake took another half step forward, and my hand tightened around the stone. Stay back. I'm not kidding. He smiled. Come on, Matt. I never heard you before, have I? Yeah, research notes, Eric stuttered. I didn't think much of it, honestly. Thought it was part of the book's gimmick, but seeing Jake like this... 
Jake hunched his back, hands pumping in and out of fists. Like what, Eric? He growled. Don't talk to him, asshole, I said. Jake was bigger than me by about half, and in his current state, more unpredictable by a mile. If he came at me, I'd have one shot to clock him with a stone. Talk to me. Talk to you, he said, cocking his head. But you're so boring, Matt. All you ever done is bitch, complain and mope. His eyes drifted between me and Eric. Your brother's always been the interesting one, and now he's even gone and figured out my mother's secret. Eric? I said. I really need you to get me up to speed. The, 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 the book? The book, man, it's... English, man, what about the book? I kept one eye on Jake, my hands gripping the stone so hard that I could feel my palm cramping. Grandma wasn't some writer documenting cryptids, Matt. He brandished the paperback and then snapped it open, flipping through it aggressively until he hard stopped on a page. He thrust it into my face. I pulled my head back and squinted. The ink had faded from years of aging, not to mention the water damage from the river crossing. The left page looked like a list of ingredients, with pencil markings over the print and beside them a set of tiny, bulleted instructions. On the right was a diagram, too complex for me to probably make out, given the condition of the book. Wait, what? Well, some of the markings looked to be runes. No, they were definitely runes. She wasn't looking for cryptids, Matt, Eric said breathlessly. She, she was making them. My grandmother died and passed down her cabin to my brother and me. Our family is not what it seems. Part 6. Let's get straight into that. Making cryptids? My mind reeled. How did somebody make a cryptid? What the fuck was our grandma doing? I brought a hand to my forehead, wincing as memories hit me like a cement truck. It's medicine, Matthew. Now be still and no crying. But I feel fine, Grandma. I don't need any medicine. Uh, everybody needs medicine. Give me your arm. What about Eric? Oh, he'll get it too. Now, give me your arm. Uncle Jake clapped his hands and broke me from my reverie. Oh, good work, Eric. Good work. This is why I always said you'd be great for the cabin. His eyes gleamed. Now, why don't we all go for a little hike? As a family, I have something I'd like to show you. After all of this, Eric said incredulously, you must be drunk. Oh, I don't think he's drunk, I said, the memory subsiding. The sound of rushing river returned, along with a frigid chill of the wind. Why were these memories so invasive, so vivid? I shook the thought away. I needed to get us out of this situation first. Well, he's taking something to keep him normal. What? Eric said. He glanced at mysteries in his hands. Did you... did you read this when we were kids, Matt? I shook my head. No, I was never to reader between us, was I? My hands found the stone in my pocket, and I thumbed at it, feeling the weight, the shape. I remember Grandma giving me a kind of medicine. My stomach felt upside down just talking about this. I hardly knew what it even meant. I think Jake's taken some medicine himself. Or maybe something that keeps him from becoming whatever Grandma meant for him to be. And Jake frowned, his small, milky eyes narrowing. <sighs> Quite the theory, Maddie. Is it? I said quietly. He stepped forward, two rapid paces, one after the other. His body swayed at a sudden stop, and from the edges of his mouth, his tongue flicked out, licking at his lips. Is that why you're so afraid of me? He said. Because you think there's a monster underneath? I'm not afraid of you. I lied, squeezing the stone. I just don't want to kill my uncle. And Jake let loose a howling laugh. Matt, 
Eric said, stepping closer to me. I don't think we should be provoking him. Uh, too late for that, I thought. Jake was here to finish something, and it involved us. I wasn't interested in letting him see it through. I tell you what, uncle, I said, stepping forward. His eyes darted from my striding feet to my face. He looked offended that I even considered myself in the same league as him. Walk away right now and I won't fucking murder you. His shoulders thrust back and his head jerked forward. His milk-white eyes bulged. Murder me? He said in a voice that was beginning to sound nothing like his own. This is your therapist, no. You're delusional. His entire body tremored, his feet stumbling in an effort to stay upright. Something's happening, Eric said seriously. Now cut it out, Matt. Well, a lot was happening. More would be happening soon. I could guarantee that. Now come at me, dear uncle. Give me an opening. My therapist thinks I've got the right idea, actually. And that my family is a bunch of hillbilly trash. I am, Jake said, dropping to a knee and snarling. A product of progress. Or whatever he had taken to keep him level, his emotions were throwing it out of whack. Show me, I said, doing my best to keep my voice level. And with a growl, he launched himself towards me, his catatonic limbs flying about, slaves to his own momentum. I took a step backwards, steadying myself with my rear leg while I pulled out the stone with my good hand. I smashed the stone against his skull with all the force that I could manage. I heard a sharp crack and then a groan as my uncle dropped wordlessly onto the rocky shore. Eric and I stood there transfixed for several moments, my heart feeling like it might beat out of my chest. My breaths came in heaves. Was he unconscious? You were trying to provoke him? Eric said, stepping carefully around the other side of Jake's unmoving body. I nodded. Yeah. Now let's make sure he stays down. I lifted a rock in my hand, ready to bash my uncle's skull to a fucking pulp. When Eric pushed me away, What the hell? he said. You can't kill him, Matt. I can't kill him. I did my best not to punch Eric square in the jaw. Look around you, man. We're fucked out here. You think Jake's a friend of ours? And that he's going to help us down the mountain? I took a few steps away, running a stressed hand through my long hair. What do you think happens when he wakes up, huh? You think he just caught it a day and lets us go? I don't know, Eric stuttered. But I know we're not murderers. We're not like him. His eyes drifted to Jake's unmoving body, his expression torn. Oh, if we do that, how are we any better? I stomped towards him and grabbed him roughly by his shirt. How are we any better? I growled. How about we're better because we didn't lure two nephews out here to try and get them to become fucking Draculas. How about we're better because we didn't give two kids a lifetime of trauma? Well, Eric was silent, his eyes wet behind his glasses. I let my hand fall from his shirt and turn my attention to Jake. His eyes were closed, but after what I'd seen in him earlier, I didn't trust him to stay out for much longer. Something was trying to break free of him, something horrible. I ran a thumb along the stone, biting my lip and weighing my options. Mad, Eric said, his hand on my shoulder, voice cracking. We have so many good memories with Uncle Jake. Remember fishing. As if fishing could make up for this. Whoever Uncle Jake had been or pretended to be, now wasn't what he was anymore. My stomach sunk as I imagined him waking up now, turning on us but without the handicap of whatever medicine he had been taking to keep him human. I don't have a choice. My brother stoned down. The snap of Jake's cheekbones filled my ears, drowning the sound of the river and the roar of the wind. I brought the stone down again to another horrid, dull crunch. Eric grabbed at my jacket, trying to pull me off, but I threw him backwards with my good hand. He might have been a foot taller than me, but he weighed close to a hundred pounds less. I was doing this, 
and no one was going to stop me. I brought the stone down again and again. My grandmother passed down her cabin to my brother and me. I've done something unforgivable, and now I don't feel so well. I feel like I'm losing control. Part 7. Let's get straight into that. Blood caught me in the eye, and I paused with my arm in the air, still clutching the stone. Jake's face had been smashed apart. His orbital bones caved in and his eyes rolled from their split open sockets. I dropped the stone to the ground, heaving breath after breath. I blinked, wiping up my face with my sleeve and looked down to see a thick layer of crimson on my arm. Are you finished? Eric said softly, his voice uneven. I turned around to face him, mouth half open, with a thousand reasons on my lips. Reasons that I had done this. Reasons I had to do this. But they all evaporated when I saw his red, tear-streaked eyes. His hair was even more dishevelled than usual, like he had been tearing at it for the past five minutes, and his face was as pale as the moon. He stifled a sob. Because I'm pretty sure he's dead now, Matt. I looked back to Jake's corpse and slowly rose to my feet. His face was mangled. Bone splinters lay scattered around what remained of his cheeks. I forced myself to look away, but there was something oddly intoxicating about it. The way the blood pooled beneath his head, the way his limbs had stopped twitching after my fifth strike with a stone. I licked my lips. Ah, the medicine appears to be working well. You can go and play with your brother now, Matthew. I wish you'd be okay now, I said, swallowing. My head felt woozy, hazy. Should we? Eric said, pulling off his glasses and dabbing at his eyes with a sleeve. Are you okay? What? I shook my head. Of course I was okay. I was the older brother, wasn't I? I could handle this. I had handled this for years. Just another notch on the trauma belt. No big deal. Why were my ears ringing? I'm fine. I'm okay, Eric said. Was that anger in his voice? I, my heartbeat slowed and the world refocused. I had to. I looked at Jake and felt a sickness grow in my stomach. Had I really done that to him? Well, he was going to hurt us, Eric. I said the words because they were the words that seemed right to say. What was I supposed to do? Let him drag us off to God knows where and turn us into fucking... Fucking what? Eric said, rounding on me. Monsters? I took a step back, feeling my vindication crumbling against his words. No, man. Cryptids. I felt off. Strange. Unwell. I licked my lips again. When did they get so dry? Just give me a second, will you? He didn't say anything, just stared at me with this crushing look of disappointment. Where tears had streaked his cheeks earlier, they were now bright red, flush with anger. Resentment. Even a sigh, I walked off down the riverside, trying to piece together what had just happened. What might still be happening. Above, thunder cracked and rain pelted my face. The storm was worsening. Well, of course it was. Oh, he was going to kill us. I mumbled to myself, hoping that saying the words aloud would help me understand them. Or at least he was going to hurt us, turn us into something horrible, definitely. I had to kill him first. I had to. I didn't have a choice. No, a voice somewhere inside me said. I did have a choice. He was unconscious, wasn't he? We could have run, left him there. I chose to kill him. More thunder, more rain. And I pulled my jacket tighter around me, shivering as I did my best to come to terms with what had happened. Oh, there's no going back now, I said quietly, doing the self-talk my therapist recommended. I have to accept it and move forward. 
I made a difficult choice to protect my brother and... Beside me, the river gurgled and a large bubble grew on the surface, popping with a wet slush. Had the current shifted? I slammed my eyes shut, trying to reground myself in a moment. I did my breathing exercises, focused on the cold rain and the howling wind and the pain in my wrist. And then splash, bigger, louder than before, like an entire tree fell into the damn drink. Eric, I called. No time to feel sorry for myself. We weren't safe yet. Fuck off, Matt. He was further up the river. Had he not heard it over the wind? No, look. I jogged back to him, doing my best to ignore my splitting headache, the heavy guilt in my gut. You're right, man. I, I shouldn't have done that. I don't know why I did or why I didn't listen to you, but... The river's current grew still and something rumbled in the water. Stones rolled from the riverbank into the drink and a dark shadow began to fill the surface of the channel. Eric took a step back, eyes wide in terror. I knew exactly what he was thinking, because it was all I could think of too. Something was in the water. Had Jake summoned it with the stones? Eric? I began, but he turned away from me. He started clambering up the bank of the river towards the wood. Eric! I shouted, scrambling after him. Can we talk? I don't really feel like talking right now, he said bitterly, stalking into the tree line. Let's just get away from the damn water. I reached the top of the bank and then ran to catch up with him. I just need to talk about what happened earlier. Please? I don't want to talk about earlier, Eric said flatly. He squinted up at the rainy sky through the forest canopy. The storm's getting worse and we're not exactly dressed for the weather. He tugged pointedly at his hoodie, wiping a wet mop of curly hair from his forehead. We need to find some shelter. We're not making it down the mountain tonight. No, that much was true. It was an hour drive just getting up the mountain, and that was without whatever creatures the darkness had coaxed out. Well, we could try the cabin, I said, not feeling much like I deserve to be making suggestions anymore. The beast knows about the cabin, Eric argued, and that's assuming the cabin's even still standing. He shivered, bringing his hood up and over his head. But there's a cave. Ah, the cave. We meant to explore it when we were kids, but Grandma had stopped us. She said it was too far from the cabin and that there were cougars in the woods and bears. Right, I said. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember, Eric said, stepping off. Uncle Jake was the one who told us about it when we were younger. It's why I suggested it. If she didn't want us to go near it and he did, then there's a good chance that's exactly where we need to be going. He said, the words a finality that told me the conversation was over. We walked for 20 minutes in silence. My conscience ate at me. The weather beat at me and my body ached all over. But it was the small voice in the back of my head that haunted me more than anything. Familiar but distant, like a faint echo. My mother weeping. Matthew, she said, please. There it is, Eric said, stopping suddenly. And I stumbled, nearly colliding with him. I've been so lost in my own thoughts that the world sort of melted away. And he pointed up at a small hill where a pitch black cave mouth yawned from the earth. It had a large entrance, easily big enough for an entire trailer to fit through, if not two. Eric reached into his pocket and pulled out his phone, turning the torchlight on. He scanned it into the mouth of the cave and it looked as if the thing went on for some distance. And then the light sputtered, blinking before vanishing completely. Fuck, he said. Battery's dead. Too many texts to dad. Mind using yours? Of course, man. I fumbled into my pocket for my own. Feeling thankful I could be useful again. Feeling thankful I could do something. Anything to make our relationship feel normal again. Here, I said, flicking my torch on. We stepped into the cave carefully. 
Our sneakers not ideal for walking on slick, wet cavern floors. Our progress came slowly, but that was fine by me. I didn't know what we were likely to find in the cave, but I had my suspicions it wouldn't be unguarded. I'd rather see the trap before it was sprung. You smell that? Eric said, bringing his fingers to his nose. Oh, it reeked like the worst smell I'd ever experienced, and it was getting worse the deeper we went. Yeah, smells like something died in here. That would be nice, Eric said, but somehow I think it's going to be much worse than that. I nodded, probably. More steps in silence, just us and the light of my phone dancing across the slick cavern walls. Did you finish the book? I asked. Most of it, yeah. Most of it? Well, I skimmed the pages. It looked like Grandma had stuffed her notes into an actual paperback novel. Maybe to hide it from visitors? But she wrote the novel too, I said, remembering her name on the cover. Seems a lot of trouble to go to. Maybe, Eric said. And he stopped suddenly. Wait a second, Matt. You just made me think of something. Yeah? Well, actually, though. And he pulled the book from his hoodie and turned the first couple of pages. Bring the light over here for a sec. I came closer, holding my phone aloft so that we could see the book clearly. He slid his finger down the page before jabbing at it with a victorious, Aha! What is it? Have a look, he said, handing me the book. And I squinted at the faded lettering. Dedicated to my three little monsters, Jacob, Alice, and Nolan. That's a dedication page to Uncle Jake, Mom, and Nolan. Eric shook his head, his face a mask of disbelief. I just assumed anything to do with the novel portion I could comfortably ignore. Why bother, right? We wanted to know about the research, what was really going on, but, but this... Who the fuck is Nolan, Matt? I blinked, trying to pull up any memory of the person. Had Mum talked about him before she passed? Had Dad? I have no idea, I said, feeling useless all over again. Oh, this is something, though, he said, his previous coolness replaced by a sense of academic excitement. If there was one thing that improved Eric's mood, it was solving a problem, or at least getting part way there. She called them her three little monsters, which means Grandma had another son. He grinned. Exactly. And we've got another uncle. And something moved in the distance, like a footstep echoing through the cave. Shit, Eric said. The light, Matt. I was already fumbling with it, my fingers swiping the screen in an anxious flurry. Eventually, I managed to shut it down and darkness engulfed us. Eric right beside me, disappeared entirely from my view. I reached out, grabbing his arm, and he jumped back. It's me, I whispered. I don't want us losing each other. Right, sure. The footsteps echoed closer now, but they sounded distinct from our own. Padded, almost. Like an animal. Like paws. My palms grew slick with sweat, was it the beast? Had it found us? A growl reverberated through the cavern, low, guttural, monstrous. I squeezed Eric's arm tighter on instinct. I wasn't going to lose him. I couldn't. And then, a voice. It's dark. My grandma died and passed down her cabin to my brother and me. We've gone to the one place she told us never to come near, and now we're trapped. Part 8. Let's get straight into that. My grabbed his arm and the footsteps echoed closer now, but they sounded distinct from our own. Padded, almost. Like an animal like paws. My palms grew slick with sweat. Was it the beast? 
Had it found us? A growl reverberated through the cavern, low and guttural, monstrous. I squeezed Eric's arm tighter on instinct. I wasn't going to lose him. I couldn't. And then a voice. It's dark. The man was in the cave. His footsteps neared, each one coming at a slow, deliberate pace. But then, he didn't need to rush. We were trapped. Caught in a massive cavern we knew nothing about, with our only exit blocked by the man himself. He knows we're here, Eric said. I wanted to tell him to shut it, that there was a chance he didn't, but I knew he was right. In the man's current state, he could almost certainly smell us. My mind shot through a hundred different escape plans, but each one ended up with us either captured or killed, and possibly eaten. Eric shifted beside me. What now? We do the only thing we can do, I said quietly, feeling not entirely sure of myself. We retake control. Retake control? Well, I took a deep breath, hating myself for what I was about to do, but... We were out of options. Running blindly into the cave wasn't on the table, and neither was running blindly into the man. That left one thing. Took you long enough? I shouted into the dark, and the man's footsteps stopped. Matt? Eric hissed. Nolan, right? I continued, ignoring my brother. You're our grandmother's other son, which means you're our uncle. Silence. Seriously? Eric said, trying to put his hand over my mouth. I pushed him away. We know what she did to you. What she turned you into. A growl echoed through the cave, low and ragged, and then footsteps resumed, and they were faster now. I sucked in an anxious breath, second-guessing my plan, but I was all in on this now, and there was no going back. We can help you. I shouted, and the footsteps thundered like a beast on all fours and close. I stumbled backwards, my body acted on instinct, and my muscles twitching to flee. But I couldn't. There was nowhere to run. Please! I crashed to the floor with a gasp. The wind knocked from my lungs. The man's heavy paw pressed on my chest, his breath smelling rancid and rotten. His eyes a horrible, glowing yellow. I struggled at him, and his claws dug into my flesh. Eric cried out beside me, bashing at the man, before he too was hit to the ground with a dull thud. Eric! I wheezed. I kicked and bit at the man. Eric! His paw moved from my chest to my mouth, where it clasped itself almost entirely around my head. I screamed muffled cries into it, my fist beating at him uselessly. This was it, I thought. I had killed both of us. My chest heaved, emotions rioting within me. And tears fell from my face. Adrenaline raced through my veins and regret filled my thoughts. I should have listened to Eric. I was a fool. The man had only advanced once I made it clear where we were. If I hadn't, a roar sounded from outside. One deeper and more feral than even a man's. And it filled the cave. Its echoes ear-splitting, and its tone like gravel in a garburator. I fell still, my resistance fading as I realized what the man was doing. It's dark, the man growled. It's dark. The same warning he'd given us the first time the beast had shown up. He meant to warn us again. I nodded beneath his grip, and he removed his gnarled paw from my face. I sat up slowly my eyes still useless in the pitch darkness of the cave. Eric, I said quietly, I'm here, Matt. I heard a man rise to his feet, and then he grabbed me by the back of my leather jacket and heaved me up with him, and Eric grabbed my shoulder, steadying himself as the man easily plucked him up next. The beast is, is back, Eric whispered beside me. Looks that way, I said. The man grunted expectantly. It's dark. All right, I said, getting his meaning. I flipped my phone's light on and cast it ahead. The man had already begun walking deeper into the cave, though this time more slowly. 
he intended for us to follow. Eric and I exchanged a brief look of unease before nodding and shuffling after him, my heart racing as I prayed we'd made the right decision. This feels too convenient, Eric whispered. Don't forget, the last time the man showed up, we nearly died. We don't have much of a choice, do we? I said, cradling my broken wrist. If it's between the beast and the man, I'm taking a man every time. If the man was Nolan, then he might be trying to help us, and maybe that was his intention all along. Likely, he knew about Jake too. We walked only a short while before we came to a halt in front of a rusty cage door, which separated our half of the cavern from the one ahead. The man sniffed at the bars and immediately, before heaving the heavy door open to a symphony of metallic screeching. Christ, I said, plugging my ears. When's the last time that hinge got greased? Might have been a while, Eric reasoned. Grandma didn't seem to care much for her hobby in her later years if... If Uncle Jake's words were anything to go by. Uncle Jake. We were both quiet for a moment, guilt swimming in my stomach, and only stirred when the man beckoned us forward with a great gnarled paw. We made our way to him. As we neared, the light of my phone began playing across the man-made objects against the stark black stone of the cave. Tables were scattered about, stacked with books and various surgical tools, while chairs sat tucked neatly beneath them. On the smooth wall ahead of us was a great sprawling diagram written in white. I recognise it as the same diagram from Mysteries. Do you think this is it? Eric said breathlessly. Where she made them? It seemed that way. Grandma hadn't wanted us exploring this cave and after passing that steel gate, she clearly didn't want anything in here, human or otherwise. I picked up a beaker of fluid gazing at it like I knew anything about chemistry. Well, this definitely fits the mold of an evil lab. Where did she get the time to do all of this? Eric said, and there was a snap of a match and then a flame hissed quietly to life. I turned to see Eric lighting a large candle. Sorry if I startled you. I just figured we ought to save your phone's battery. No, that's a, a good idea. I stuffed my phone back into my pockets while the two of us made our way around the lab, lighting the other candles. Oh, I've been thinking, Eric said, waving out his matches. He lit the last of the wicks. About what we might find down here. I could still hear our mother weeping in the back of my thoughts. I could still feel, no matter how far I pushed it down, the thrill I'd felt bashing in Jake's skull. I swallowed. Yeah, me too. We split up and looked over the contents of the tables. A lot of it was books written in a language I couldn't make heads or tails of, bound in leather with a fancy steel clasps on their front. They looked like a thousand year old books. Then, beneath a stack of scattered paper, I found a page with my name on it. I snatched it up, looking at Eric to make sure he hadn't noticed. My brother stood near the far wall of the room, his head in a book, occasionally glancing at the ground and adjusting his glasses. Good. I was in the clear. When I read. Matthew is responding well. His mannerisms appear mostly unaffected. He's still kind, rebunctious, and curious. Suddenly far less aggressive than Jacob. I was also quite happy to see his physical state has remained consistent. And I sense I may have sorted out the issue that affected Nolan. There are still certain hmm, uncertainties I have about him, but it's possible he is the one after all. I'll continue monitoring over the next week, but Alice is growing concerned and the boys have grown more brazen. I found Eric wandering towards the cave yesterday. I may soon have to send them home. I'll remind Jake to keep a better eye on them in the future and to stop filling their heads with tales of adventure. There will be plenty of time to explore this mountain when everything is done. Eric, I said, the reality of the situation crashing upon me. What if we find out we're monsters too? Eric said, 
walking towards me with a look of remorse. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. The truth was, I didn't think there was much we in it. Grandma had given me something and now it was clear it was the same serum she'd given to Jake and Nolan. I looked at the man, at Nolan, and sighed. What has she done to us? And why? I... I don't know, I said, hating myself for being too weak to admit what I was. What if I turn now and hurt Eric? My stomach twisted. Why don't you stay here? Uh, I'm gonna go get some fresh air. I slunk towards the rusty door, and Eric's hand clasped on my shoulder. I get it, Matt. I do. Jake wasn't Jake anymore. You did what you had to do in order to protect us. He shook his head. I was wrong to make you feel like you were one of them. I paused, unsure what sparked this change of heart. Eric's expression wasn't angry or hateful anymore. Rather, it was calm and a bit regretful. He let his hand fall away. So, don't feel like you need to run off, all right? I nodded. It was a nice sentiment and I was glad that Eric trusted me again. But he was wrong too. The page had confirmed it. I was a monster. And I had already felt myself losing control to Grandma's medicine. What if the next time, instead of Jake, Eric was the focus of my anger? And I stuffed my hands into my pockets. I wasn't going to let that happen. Don't worry, I lied. I'm not running off. I'm just getting some fresh air. I got my phone's lights and I'll find my way back. I heaved the steel gate open to the sharp notes of squilling metal. And Nolan stepped in front of me, his massive jaws dripped with saliva, his glowing yellow eyes boring into mine. I squirmed beneath his gaze. It's dark, he said, pointing to the back of the room. I blinked. Was he trying to show me something? And swallowing, I picked up a candle and followed him towards the shadowy corner. The same corner I'd seen Eric in while I had read the page. As we neared, I realized something was on the floor beneath us. Runes. They made a large circle, and looked as if they'd been carved directly into the cavern floor, hammer and chisel style. What the hell? I muttered, recalling the runes from mysteries. What is this? The symbols, Eric said, pagan by the looks of them. His eyes were downcast, his voice filled with guilt. I think it may be some sort of a summoning circle. Summoning circle? To summon what? Eric fidgeted with his hands and he started to speak. And then the words escaped him and fell silent again. Eric? I... Matt? His words came between whimpers. Another anxiety attack. No sense badgering him right now. Nolan had led me here. Perhaps he had more information. Nolan, right? What's going on? Can you tell me anything? Help me understand. Silence. Of course he couldn't explain. His only vocabulary consisted of announcing the time of day. Still, I had appreciated if he could have pointed out the book or scroll to help me along. And then it hit me. Eric might be too worked up to get any words out, but I knew where he'd learned about that summoning circle. I extended my hand to my brother. Hand me the book then. I'll find it myself. Eric stepped backwards, clutching the book against his chest. I... I can't, Matt. You don't get it. What? Don't get it? Eric, stop fucking around. Another roar erupted. The beast. Was that closer? Shit, I thought. The bastard probably heard the screeching of the darn gate. I'm not fucking around. Eric shrieked at me, his eyes wet with tears. There's stuff in here that you wouldn't understand, couldn't understand. What the hell was going on? I winced, bringing a hand to my head as my mother's crying voice screamed in my mind. Please, Matthew, please. My lips felt dry again and my ears rang. Eric, I said, stumbling to stay upright. The book, I need to know what the circle is. I already told you, he sobbed. It's a summoning circle. 
I need more details than that, Eric. What the fuck is it summoning? Please, Matthew, please, you have to. I shook myself free of my mother's voice, gritted my teeth and grounded myself in the moment. Focus on the pain in my wrist, focus on the sound of water dripping against stone, and focus on the cool breeze. Breathe. If I give you the book, you'll do it, Eric said, backing away from me and shaking his head. You'll do it? Do what? I shouted. Sound, touch, scent, ground myself. Fuck, this was hard. It's nearly dark. Nolan growled. Another roar, this one echoing through the cave. So much closer now. Sharp, jagged and monstrous. The beast. Was it inside? Damn it! If I give you this book, Eric said, pointing at me with a manic expression. Glasses crooked on his nose. You'll do to me what you did to Jake. Fuck, my legs felt weak. I stumbled to a knee, taking another breath and centering myself. Memories bombarded me, while my mother's voice screamed in my head over and over. Please, Matthew, please. Shut up, Mum. Please. Please. Why would I do that? I said, screwing up my face in sensory overload. Tell me, Eric. Tell me why I would do that. I, Eric said, trailing off. It's dark, Nolan repeated, this time harsher and more fiercely. It's dark. I became acutely aware of him moving, darting off towards the way we'd come. Where is he going? Another roar, guttural, horrible. So close, too close. Something was running through the cave, something massive. Please, Matthew, please. Herrick, I screamed, tell me. I'm one of them, he sobbed quietly. A monster. Wow, 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 wow. Another one, wow. Absolutely awesome, riveting tapestry of horror there from the incredible Towers from the Cryptid. Over on Reddit, no sleep. Um, it's actually a subreddit of its own that uh, I would recommend you guys, if you do get on the Reddit platform, get over there and slap a follow and an upvote. Lots and lots of great content daily uploaded to that uh, Reddit. You can lose yourself for a good few hours. And uh, I predict great things from this author. What a fantastic story so far. Of course, more from this to come over the next few days, including lots of other horrifying gems. Guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid crew. Don't forget I've set up a uh, second channel, sort of a backup channel in case anything happens to this main channel. I'm also going to be uploading as and when I can um, sporadically at that short stories and some other content, maybe some gaming type of content as well, including my son and my daughter on that, sort of a family effort. Uh, links for that of course are in the description box alongside all of my social links. Uh, if you guys are not aware, I've been uploading a lot of the back catalogue to the uh, to all of the major podcast platforms such as iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Spreaker, etc, etc. Of course, links in the description box below for those as well. I hope you guys are all well and happy, family and friends alike, and are keeping fit and focused as possible during this testing times. But above all, remember, be safe, not Sorry.